Mike the Ref Maloney, Big Bad Boris on the call here tonight. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let go. Super Kick Party! Yeah, pay the money for that. No one and of course, you gotta get the coffins in. Hey, yo, 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 and away we go, and uh, hope you guys enjoyed that new little intro. I uh, might do some tinkering with it, but figured, you know, I gotta change things up here a little bit here. Welcome to the AEW Dynamite Sidecast here on the Mike Ref Twitch channel. Hope you're having a great Wednesday night. Let me just, I gotta clear something off my screen here. We'll click that, we're good there. Yeah, hope everybody's doing well. It's been a interesting Wednesday. I see Tony's working on trolls again, so that's always an interesting aspect here. Uh, it's going to be a fun episode of Dynamite tonight. It's the week of why are these guys getting title shots uh, in professional wrestling week? Where we got, uh, well, of course, we had Jinder and uh, Seth on Monday. And now we're getting Hook and Samoa Joe in our main event here coming up uh, tonight. I think it's going to be a great match. I think Samoa Joe's going to absolutely take Hook to his limit. And I really do hope it's a pinfall, not a tap out or a pass out tonight. Unless they tell a good story about it. But I can't see Samoa Joe losing it here. But I could see them just having a lot of fun with this and having a very intense match uh, to set this up. So. We have that. We also have, uh, what are the odds? The I was just going to get to that. What are the odds the Bang Bang Gang win the ROH six-man titles tonight against the Gates of Agony and Brian Cage? I got a feeling that that's actually going to happen tonight. That way they can get both the Gates of Agony and, uh, or sorry, the Bang Bang Gang and the Acclaimed are both going after, uh, the United Kingdom now. And now that they both have titles, they both have equal representation as to why they should be beating up on those guys. And it's just going to lead to a bigger conflict. So I honestly feel that that's what's going to happen here. By the way, good to see you tonight, Jaeger. Always a pleasure having you around. A uh, couple other matches on the card. We got Top Flight uh, taking on the returning private party who made their promo return last week uh, during dynamite but now they're actually going to do their in-ring return uh taking on top flight here so it's going to be uh, a very quick match it's going to be all over the place bouncy 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 everywhere and it, it should be a lot of fun uh we're going to get diana perrazzo's Di dynamite debut tonight as she's going to be taking on anna J, which anna J is pretty much turned into the x-pac of the women's division it's either her or Nyla Rose are always taking on the first opponents for major talent here. So it's going to be fun. Uh, sorry, messages coming through here, but um, yeah, it's that's going to be a lot of fun here tonight. So in the other match, that they're highlighting tonight is Christian Cage taking on Dustin Rhodes with the TNT Championship on the line, which I don't think anybody expects Dustin to win this. Uh, I think this might be one of those farewell matches for Dustin because as much as he's a confident AEW wrestler, I don't know if he's going to stick around. That's going to be the question we're going to be playing all year here. When it comes to WWE, when it comes to AEW, when it comes to Impact, New Japan, are they going to stick around? And uh, sorry, somebody was asking me if I was going to be streaming. I thought I'd give him a proper answer, but. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a... F 
it's going to be one of those years where everybody's just uh, flop it all over the place. People are going to be moving nonstop. I guess uh, there's reports coming out today that uh, I guess Andrade was sort of uh, hyping it up backstage for the last few few weeks before he left that he was going to WWE, that he's pretty much already signed. It's pretty much guaranteed. Which, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. That, that just seems like... If you're telling everybody at work that you're already leaving work for another job, I, I, I don't know if I was a coworker, if I would really take that that well, to be honest. And as an employer, I would, I would almost like to get rid of them without pay, but that's just going to send them over to the comp competition that much quicker. So I don't know which way you'd want to go with that, to be honest. Like Tony Khan puts himself in a bad situation there. Not that he isn't familiar with getting into bad situations. But I will say, sometimes he does get into situations where he is... All his internet talking, I, I really... Uh, it, it's, a, it's a mixed bag, exactly. But I'm better than you. And you know it! Joop! Joop, you're back! You're alive! Oh my goodness, you're alive! And by the way, folks, I want to... Uh, just because he made an announcement earlier, also working, uh, if you aren't following him right now, he will be streaming tonight at 11 o'clock uh, Mountain Time. Or 11 o'clock Eastern, sorry. So if you aren't following him, please follow... First time in a while, he's going to be back at her. So 9 o'clock Mountain Time, 11 o'clock Eastern. Make sure you guys are there for it. I would raid out, but we're going to be gone an hour earlier. But Jupe, hope you're doing well. Hope life is treating you right. If you're working, that's always the best part. I know work has been just nuts for me. I had a sort of a vehicle wouldn't start. So yeah, that's right. You were at the TNA show. Uh, on the weekend, I saw the pictures online here. Uh, looked like a great crowd. Looked like it was so much fun to be there. TNA with the rebrand, it's got j just a new feeling, a new vibe, a new. Uh, what's the best way to explain? A new energy to it. And they just announced uh, about half an hour ago that uh, Ash by Elegance, I believe, is her name. The former Dana Brooke, she is officially signed with Impact. They just threw that out there maybe half an hour ago. Uh, congratulations to Ash there. I, it was sort of a foregone conclusion, but I, I can't see her getting that spotlight in the crowd without being signed. But that, that card on Saturday was a lot of fun to watch. It was back to the old days of what uh, TNA was like. And just... A lot of craziness, a lot of happiness, a little bit of a gong show, a little bit of old school, a little bit of new school, and a hell of a lot of action that's a lot of fun. I can't wait till tomorrow if I can uh, copy things down or if I can uh, get get the time to watch it a bit. I want to see uh, Osprey Alexander, which is the main event uh, that came up at Snake Eyes there, so... Hey, Zodiac, how's the arm? Your arm's still good. I can raise it. There's a little bit of stiffness there, but that's just going to take some time. The knee is bruised, but okay. I'm not I'm not dead. Let's put it that way. We are definitely good. It is definitely able to stream tomorrow. Oh, yeah. I took the whole... Uh, you know how they uh, do the tap dance off the stage, you know, when you run into the side like that? Yeah, that's... From a standing position, I took one and landed right on my knee and elbow at work on uh, on Monday. So that was after being off for three days due to uh, my vehicle not being able to start. So no, 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 no apologies necessary. Stuff happens. Can't help it. But uh, just glad that things are getting better now and. Life's getting good. Wrestling's turning great. Like, we're going to have a great episode of Dynamite tonight. By the way, Zodiac, good to see you as well. Uh, I really wonder what they're going to start the card off with here. 
There is one quick thing I wanted to get into here, and I want to ask your opinion on stuff here as we're getting into the opening credits here. I've been listening to a couple podcasts lately that say they're they're wanting to cover all the wrestling. But if somebody truly doesn't like a product and all they're doing every week is just complaining about it, do you even want them to bother covering it? Because I know we used to have one guy in here that absolutely hated AEW and wanted to talk about everything else, and I ended up having to ban him because he was just trying to derail conversations to everything else. First time I've actually gotten a threat <laughs> online, which is cool in a way. But yeah, I've I've always taken the impression of if you don't like the product, don't don't watch it. There's so much wrestling now. Like, let's see now. There's three, five, seven, nine, ten, twelve. Just between AEW, WWE, and TNA, you got 12 hours of wrestling right now. That's not counting New Japan. That's not including indie. That's not including all that craziness. Like, if you like a product, watch product. If you don't like a product, move on to another product because there's going to be a lot more that you're enjoying. I love that it's produced. It's uh, Lexi came downstairs with the popsicle. Ah. She got a chair. Uh oh. This is not a good sign, Jupe. If she's getting smart enough to do that, that might be uh, the little MacGyver. She's good enough to get get on the castle and Super Mario. Whoa! Chip off the old block, it looks like. Yeah, it's okay to have different opinions and different tastes, but if you're coming to AEW sidecast just to bash AEW, then what's the point? Yeah, like... Well, here's the thing. I will I guess I'll name the podcast for sure because I, I absolutely adore Mike McGuire and everything that he does. I just, I've been listening to the last three weeks of the alternate commentary table with the two color guys for Dungeon Wrestling uh, out of Calgary. And it just seems like every time you listen to them, they're just crapping on AEW. And I'm just listening to this and I'm like, I got to stop downloading this show because if you hate a product that much, why are you watching it? Well, because I want it to get better. Well, you crapping on it every week is not going to help it. Got to start listening to Stephen Larson. I I typically have Stephen Larson on in my background here as I'm doing work during the day. Uh, the other one, I, I do watch, basically Wrestle Talk's the one video I watch every morning before I go to work, personally, so. Steve's impression of a towel, yeah. I like his Triple H one personally myself, but. So, chat, you got to help me out here. Has Dustin faced or Gold Dust versus Christian? That had to happen at WWE a few times, right? I, I'm assuming this has happened at least a couple times. But this, this will be a fun match regardless. These two know how to work. The only thing I'm di like, if you want to crap on continuity, I'll give you I'll give you a simple one here. Right now, Dustin's ankle should be in about a million pieces. After at the pay per view when uh, Swerve Strickland threw uh, threw a cinder block at his ankle, so Dustin's legit probably the best wrestler at his age. He always does great. Yeah, absolutely. Like when uh, Keith Lee wasn't able to perform against Strickland, 
I know they're tag partners, but it just even made more sense just to put a guy like Dustin in there. Still go back to Dustin Cody 2019 match of the year. Absolutely. That was, I, I could see where you go with that. So if you uh, haven't heard and the reason that there's a different voice in the background, uh, Tony Schiavone's come down ill this week. So they brought in Ian Riccoboni from uh, Ring of Honor to, to call the show tonight. And there was a lot of love for Schiavone and, Somebody tried to uh, somebody tried to troll on uh, Tony about saying nobody cares if Shivani isn't there. Oh man, you want to talk about a dog pile? No, I absolutely love Riccaboni. I I quietly wish that uh, Riccaboni was going to get that uh, collision job. Like, don't get me wrong, Kevin Kelly's absolutely spectacular too. Ke Kevin and Nigel are a great combination together. From every time, every time I've gotten a chance to see them. I miss NXT 2017, Corey and Tom, yeah. I don't know, for me, it'll always be uh, Gorilla and Bobby. But that's a different kind of storytelling when you're talking about wrestling. Because a lot of people, like they, they, they like to compare which commentary team was best well for the decades that they were in and the times that they were working there you need different kinds of commentators for different kinds of eras like if you're going back to the uh 1980s and whatnot where one of the biggest uh, moves that came out of it was a body slam you need guys like heenan and uh gorilla to tell a sto a different kind of story than you don't want Taz and uh, Taz and Excalibur t talking about the, the intricate, the exact details. I'm not going to go the intricacy. There we go, intricacies of uh, trying to uh, come up with the details of what a body slam can do and whatnot. So. But yeah, like, God, do I love or love that power slam of uh, of dust in there? It's so smooth. All right, question for a chat. There's three choices you got here: Dustin Rhodes, Samoa Joe, Randy Orton. Who has the best power uh, snap power slam of the bunch? Just going to throw that out there right now for you. Which, which, which one of those three has the best one? I, I think I might side with you, Zodiac, with Randy, but geez. Dustin definitely has a smooth one, too. Pillar to post. I love that Suicide Squad bannering outside, by the way. And it's so apropos now that uh, with Joe in the main event and voicing King Shark in the game. And the one quiet thing that a lot of people didn't realize during the World's End press conference, uh, Joe slightly revealed that uh, WB Games has a bit of a deal with AEW for some of these upcoming games they have. By the way, we will be p playing uh, Suicide Squad here on the channel when it releases February 2nd. Right after we're done Horizon Zero Dawn, which we'll get back to. Most likely we'll get back to it on Monday here. So I know this week after the fall and just I wasn't able to get my arms much more above this. Like, it still hurts to bring it up, especially my left one. But it uh, it was just a pain to try and think about lifting controllers and that. So I thought it was best to take a couple days off and recoup. And I actually didn't get home yesterday till about 9 o'clock. So 
nine o'clock Eastern. So Christian, what are you doing? Christian don't dive like that normally. I guess he's being extra desperate about having to keep this title right now. So we get, oh yeah, there's our first picture, picture. Got to get it on mute. But while we got a split second here, and I know I've been going for a while here. Oh, Jaeger, sorry. Randy's might be the best, but when I picture it in my mind, I'll always think of Dustin. Yeah, like even back when his gold dust days, just the snapness and the crisps, crispness. Why am I picking hard words to say tonight? Jesus. It's a little bit painful here that just thinking about all these nice words I'm coming up with. I'm trying to be a Thethorthesis Thithorith, guy. I don't know. Whatever. But yeah, like, I do like Samoa Joe's as well. Mainly because usually he's got, the thing about Samoa Joe, he's got so many different items in his arsenal, right? But yeah, now we're going to get the slowdown point with, uh, with Christian and Dustin here, just for the fact that they want, they know how to work that game. Oh, don't ever apologize when you got to leave. You know, I am notorious. There's one thing that I am horrible at that I need to improve on. And that's uh, working on just lurking and not saying anything as I'm in streams. Like I know all the time I have these, uh, notifications come up saying that I have a a sub for X number of months and I never click on it to show it but and I never I, I'm whenever I pop in I'm very rarely on the chat I do need to get a little better on that but whether you're uh, hanging out whether you're lurking whether you're chatting it's always appreciated to have each and every one of you here guaranteed because it is a lot of fun having here Oh, and uh, while Jupiter uh, is around here, I want to give a shout out to him, an extra one. Uh, he was the guy that helped me get up, get the idea of doing the How the Ref Would Book Challenge. If you uh, check out the points, uh, the payoff points there, the little muscle guy on the bottom, uh, you can contribute your points towards uh, me actually coming up with um, one of those um, Adam Blompier-like... Uh, booking streams on how I would take something and change it to make it try and make it a little more, more sense here so as Jupiter just contributed 2,000 points to that where we got there there we go that's like an AEW fight forever move Christian just pulled so for those that weren't around last week you can contribute two thousand a day. Uh, we're up to twenty-seven thousand or twenty-seven percent, forty-one thousand out of one hundred and fifty. So yeah, while we're getting that together here, just uh, working on a few ideas. What once uh, once we hit the goal, I'll put a little uh, thing in our Discord which I'll put a link there. If you're not joined in there, feel free to. And uh, I'll put a different chapter in there about different ideas that you guys want booked. And uh, I'll start picking out of there. Ooh. Wrestling Rodeo back coming back up. Looking forward to it, sir. I will say, get, gain the opportunity to go to my first indie show in eight months. I'd, uh, actually, no, sorry, it was August, so it'll be six months. Uh, coming up this Sunday here at Roger's Place here in Edmonton. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, for those that don't know, we're, uh, Love Wrestling is hosting a wrestling night at uh, 
Rogers Place during the Oil Kings game, the junior team here in town. Zodiac throwing another 4,000, yeah. Um, I got work provided our theater box for us, so I'm going for free. And I'm taking everybody from uh, the Backbreaker Network here that's local. We're all going, so... Uh, right now, it's going to be Melball, Andre, Jules, Crowder, and myself will be there as well. So, Well, that wasn't a destroyer. It was a code red, but that's okay. Wish you could make it up. Yeah, well, I, I enjoy the wrestling. I, some of the politics there confuse me a little bit, but... That's not for me to worry about because I don't deal with indie wrestling a whole lot these days. That's a Mel and Andre thing. They've been doing such a fantastic job and now being part of uh, Saturday, uh, Saturday night's or Sunday night's main event. Put you and everyone in the car. Nice. I'd have to get the time off though. That's the one thing. And well, I, I will say this year, I am taking a little bit more of a priority on myself. Notice is great, but when you can only book one person off at a time, sometimes it, it gets interesting. Let's put it that way. Second time Christian's going off the top. Like, maybe it's just me, but there isn't a lot of, uh... That's not really normal for Christian here. I, I love the fact that they're advertising the AEW Fight Forever uh, Season 2. Uh, for those that weren't around last week, we actually played the Tony Storm and the Being the Elite section. I was going to say there is no way in hell they're going to let that fall as a finish. Um, the YouTube video for the Tony Storm being the elite run uh, will be up this Saturday on our uh, gaming channel. And for anybody that's asking right now, I'll make it simple. It's a fun game to play for a couple hours at a time, but it's not something you're going to come back to every single week. At least that's my opinion. I don't see it being something you play constantly, so. But there are makings of a good game there, so. Uh-oh. Christian's stuck there again. Ha! That'll work. Aubrey's like, whoa, what happened? What happened? I don't think Aubrey would care, honestly. What in the world? Oh, going into the crossroads. Oh, Nick's sitting there perfect. Whoa. Whoa. Yam Bag City. I'm using the coin one a lot today. Ah, uh, good old Ted. Oh. That was a little off. Nick's young, though, but he's doing a good job. Uh oh. There's Yam Bag City. There's your Canadian destroyer at a boy on the floor. I think he was going to try and hit the post, but these posts are a lot further back than an or than a WWE ring, right? 
There's that spear. Ugh. Yeah, that's gonna wrap it up real quick. Good night. Wow. They're protecting Dustin that way? I, I, I'll i be frank. I thought this match was just going to be uh, a token match for this, right? Ha! He hooked himself and he had to hook himself back up again. There's a three. So you had to do two of them. Oh, well. Christian look on his face is like he's not happy. Now, as as we're gonna have to talk about half these wrestlers now, is that Dustin's last match in AEW? Yeah, there's no way they're going to do hook and swerve for the title. I would have thought Dustin was retiring at AEW. There very well could be a choice that that, that happens. But the, like, I, like I was saying during the intro earlier. Uh oh, I'll get back to a sec here, folks. Ah, there we go. Ooh, Penta and Commander against Cassidy and Beretta. Let's go. We're going to have some fun here. Ugh. But yeah, we're, we're going to be playing this game all year of is x and y gonna sign or x and y gonna move just because there are so many contracts that are up right now and it just worked out perfectly that so many wrestlers got uh two-year and then three-year contracts from AEW, and then five-year uh five-year contracts uh, from wwe all signed in 2019 which means this year is going to be an absolute gong show for people moving around. There's a, there's a high potential for that. Whether it actually happens, we'll see. But yeah, Swerve not having a belt is criminal. Like I've always said Phoenix is the guy in AEW that is just the talent that doesn't need a title. Swerve almost needs a title just to be recognized exactly who he is. It's not, uh, Endeavor doesn't like to seem, Endeavor doesn't mind spending money, but they need to spend it on stuff that's worthwhile. And the biggest reason with, uh, like, for example, at Mercedes, I could actually see the reason why they didn't want to pay her the money she wanted. And that's simply because Becky Lynch's contract's up this year as well. Because whatever you pay Mercedes, you're probably going to have to pay a little bit extra 
to Becky by the time her contract comes up. So it's going to be all over the place there. So there's a potential where you could have... You got to think about your other signings, not just your current ones. So, and the fact that, well, I guess it's not publicly traded anymore. So, we really, oh no, it is publicly traded. So, yes, they they do have to uh, report those signings, so everybody's going to know about it regardless. So, that that's one thing about AEW. Tony Khan doesn't have to tell us anything if he doesn't want to. He owns it. He runs it. If he didn't want to tell us a single thing about anything, he doesn't have to. But you you announce these signings because you're you're proud to. Tony does have a tendency to get a little bit more open than he really should in some cases, which can be a good or a bad thing. And it's so funny. Like everybody's Everybody's piling on Tony for what he did about uh, gender earlier this week. I think it was a brilliant move, even though he was getting crapped on after. Because so many casuals actually wanted to find out who the hell this guy was. The more you can find people that want to identify who you are and what your product is, when, when you're getting attention from the USA Network for your product that isn't on there, that's a bonus. Oh, this is nuts. Oh. And if you want to if you want to catch a good laugh, a good situation, that promo was great for Swerve. Absolutely it was. Uh-oh. I'll get back to that in the sec, Zodiac here. Oh, God, Seidel, what are you doing here? All right. <laughs> Jericho throwing jokes. North Charleston, South Carolina. All right, that's a mouthful for a city. All right, those are getting the tag match set up. Are there rumors that Mercedes is signed with AEW? Apparently, it's all but all but ink dried. Is the what the story is? I won't believe it until I actually see her pop in somewhere. Whether it's on a Dynamite or a pay-per-view or at the Royal Rumble, which I'll be frank, Andrade's been running around saying that he's already pretty much signed with WWE. I'm assuming he'll be a, a surprise spot in the Rumble. That just makes way too much sense everywhere. So, like I said, there's there's so much speculation going around everywhere about who's going where and what and how and why. And the fact that uh, Nemeth has gone to, uh, to TNA, which I, I actually feel is a right move for him based on all the other matches he's able to do. And with, with all due respect, the, the taping schedule for TNA... Is absolutely brilliant for a lot of wrestlers, especially if you want to work the indies. All 
Ah, uh, good to see Phoenix out there, but not good to see him in those uh, special pants there. Corduroy. What are those? Corduroy? Either way, they're not wrestling tights, so let's not, let's not mince words here. He needs to get back in the ring soon. I really do hope he... I, I hope his healing's going well, which I'm assuming it has to here. Cargo, there we go. I'll throw the whistle out on me there for that one. I didn't notice the extra pockets, so I... I love how there's constantly a Simon Miller sign in the crowd every week. Did you guys see that note that uh, apparently one of the ring attendants had last week? Or one of the building attendants for last week's show at Jacksonville? That they didn't want anybody coming in with blank signs or anything talking about Kylie Ray or Chris Jericho? I don't know whether it's true or not, whether they had it. It would make a lot of sense because that that moment during the pay-per-view when everybody was chanting NDA, I think that pretty much killed it. Uh, I don't know if you keep it up in your AEW or whatnot, but uh, there was a report right before uh, World's End that uh, Chris Jericho was pulling a Vince McMahon with some of the female talent that came in, specifically Kylie Ray. Then basically two weeks after, or sorry, a week after, uh, Nick Hausman turned around and said, yeah, I don't know if I had all the facts on that. Which triply turned everything into a gong show because Hausman's famously known as the guy that uh, has all the info on CM Punk. You throw two and three together and see what happens there. They're kept, MGF said it perfectly, it is, uh, oh, miss, 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 one, over, ah, try to put the hands in the pocket, eat a foot, ah, it's always beautiful. Wait, are we doing Lucha Libre rules here or something? I guess we are at some point. So I got a dumb question for you guys. I'm always full of these. Has there been any advertising for tonight about the private party uh, top flight match that they advertised this afternoon? This might be a match to just simply replace that one, I think. Because Tony Khan did throw it up on the old uh, X machine here earlier. Once again, I am refraining from that word that Zodiacs tried to get me to say. But yeah, I did see it on there and I just, it looks like this is probably the match to replace it. Cause remember that promo that they had last week that, uh, they were all shaking heads and whatnot. So yes, that, that one Zodiac, I'm not using that. I refuse to, I, I will give you the whistle this time on that. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to update my soundboard here soon. With a few of the updates that uh, Elgato's done to their stream deck, I'm going to be able to play around and fix a few things up here so it's a little easier on all of us. And I'll have a f access to a few more buttons to play with. <laughs> but, uh... Oh, they are doing it tonight! There it is! Pew. Go figure. Ask and ye shall receive, right? So we're getting... Three tag team matches and two, three three tag team matches and three singles tonight.
The only graphic I haven't seen is the added JD out of Peraza one so far. Maybe they're, maybe one of them couldn't make it. Who knows? I can imagine what the internet's going to be like if they don't have a women's match on tonight. That'll be such a pleasant place to be around. <laughs> but yeah, we when it comes to wrestling right now, it's just such an awesome place to be right now. And it's great to be around here with awesome people like you, like all of you. It is just a fun time here. And uh we got we got some nice we got some fun things coming down the pipe here coming soon. So once again, like I, I just have to find time to just sit down and actually work on stuff because um the next big project I have coming up here is our fantasy draft that I got planned, but I just, I just have to get the logistics down on how to do it on stream here. Cause I use a different broadcast software than, uh, most of the people that do these kind of things. Like most of the time when you're doing uh lists and stuff like that, you're using like uh, StreamYard or something. I'm just using OBS. So I got to create everything on my own here. Uh oh. And I, I thought we were going to get a fast match here with uh, Private Party and Top Flight. This one has been going pretty good pace through the whole thing, too. That was a leap. Oh, it's great having Penta out here. Like, oh, and uh, we get the privilege of having Penta up here in Edmonton here in, I think it's three weeks time or four weeks time. Next time, top talent, Sid. See him, him and T.Y. Jackson in a match. That's going to be a lot of fun. I believe that's what it is. T.Y. Jackson and uh, Dalton Rogue in a, in a three-way. Because uh, T.Y. Jackson's officially the king of the trios matches. Uh oh. Yeah, that just took way too much time. Oh, yeah, actually, oh, that's a nice snap on that TDT there. I'm glad somebody else is screwed up words tonight, too. Thanks, Taz. We're bringing it up when other people screw up names. But here's another thing I love about AEW here. Just watching this match in general here. You don't necessarily have to have a heel team and a face team. Like, you know, sometimes you have to have them directly separated no matter what. AEW, they just want good matches. It It is a bit of a tough thing sometimes as well because... If nobody's defined in one position, it's sort of like everybody's stuck in the same position. Like nobody's standing out one way or the other. Sort of like when MJF was there. He was a he was a standout heel. Then he was a standout face. But there was no real Oh, destroyer number two. Hey, CDI, how you doing here tonight, sir? 
Hope you're doing well. We're watching a little AEW wrestling here tonight on the old TSN network. And having a lot of fun doing it here. Just trying to think if there's a better set to do than the, this one behind me here. But now with this new uh, camera I got, I can play around with the background a little bit more. So. Yeah, Jupe, if you're wondering, I picked up the new Elgato face cam. Not the pro, just the regular, but. Jeez! See, for those that are behind me, uh, yeah, that's going to apply to either one of those two moves that just happened. That was an interesting beach break. Oh yeah, Commander's eating this pin. Yeah, there we go. You had to look and see what see who you have in this match, and you have to assume that Commander was gonna be the one eating the pin. Because Trent, they're trying to get up as... Ever since the... Uh, I think he faced Eddie Kingston last week for the uh, Continental Crown, or he was the first opponent for Eddie Kingston for the Continental Crown. And they're trying to make him a credible, credible challenger here, but this should be the point where we see the uh, Undisputed Kingdom here in just a few seconds. Because this is Roddy Strong's uh, little network here. Wow. 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 Did I call this? I, I don't know if I'm clairvoyant or anything, but, you know. Man, that mustache. has a very well-defined mustache that seems to, not to be too too bushy but somewhere in the uh starting to get to the Fu Manchu level here but I love the fact that the ROH titles in general spend more time on dynamite than they do on the actual ROH show Oh, I see the Briscoe uh, armband there. Shout out to Jay Briscoe one year ago today. I wouldn't. Uh, at least he's still yelling the name. Wardlow's got to come out and destroy somebody, right? At least ROH still exists. Yeah, let's... And... It's the only other streaming service I currently have. I, uh... I saw the prices for the TNA new streaming service and... They wanted like three hundred dollars US for for a year of their programming and including the pay per views. I'll get to that in just a my experience of that on Saturday. That's gonna be interesting here. Just Oh, you won't give him a mic.
Well, the fans are being generous about this. What? Why'd you take your shirt off then? Oh, they want setting up for the pay-per-view. Okay. That's like a month and a half away. Jesus. You were seeing Ed 64 wrestling ROM hacks that have come out recently. I've heard of a few. I haven't kept track of my ROM hacks that much, but I, I, I've seen it more the AEW characters more and more look like uh, N64. It is... Uh, oh. So, they're pre-booking a match that's a month and a half away. That's great. The AEW game looks cool. Um... Once again, just a reminder to everybody, I'm going to throw the uh, link out in the chat. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, uh, please do. It's free. It helps us out a lot. And uh, just a reminder that on uh, on Saturday, we're going to have the Tony Storm uh, be in the Elite run. Both the new character and the new um, mode that they have in there, basically an arcade run. Uh, all the details on that will be there, but uh oh, what's Hangman up to? Hangman TA, I think, is what we're going to call him from now on. Isn't that what you're supposed to do in the first place, Hangman? The mustache is thick. Like I said, Magnum TA, right there. As soon as he, as soon as he said God, it just pew. No, I I could see them making a Saturday night hack as well. Like, uh, here we get to the sappy moment here tonight. But uh, just a quick summary for uh, anybody asking about AEW Fight Forever. Great for an hour. Great for once in a while. Don't buy a full price. Yeah. Shout out to Jay Briscoe once again. It's amazing. The fa he said the family was here, but they're not coming out. Can you imagine all the stuff he's gone through this year? Mark is just like the way Mark's come through all this and the way the locker room supports him there. Just don't be a
Wow. They told her she would never walk again and she's walking now. Oh, uh, this is a great moment. You know what? Look at that crowd just... Can you imagine? Can you imagine a doctor telling you that you'll never walk again? And then... All you can do is just believe in yourself and you end up coming out, out on top like that. Like... <sighs> Congrats, and, you know, it, it makes you really put life in perspective here. Like, it, you, you do need to keep life in check quite a bit. Well, let, let's face it. Jay Briscoe wasn't perfect. He was far from perfect in his life. He made some comments that essentially got him barred from TV for the longest time. Like when they got signed, they were not allowed to run on AWTV. They had the Ring of Honor only. Until the execs had to have a very strong talking to. And even the, uh, the tribute match after Jay died, they wanted to put that as a dark match. Not on their TV until there was a complete outrage for it. Just never forget, every person can be good for goodness. It just, sometimes you need the extra stimuli to do it. They told my kid he would never walk unassisted because of being born with dislocated hips and scoliosis. We fixed both by going to other doctors and advocating for him. He's been out of his spine brace for two years now. Like, uh, treated like a normal kid now. Like, that's just. Never take life for, for granted. With, with, without a doubt, never take life for granted. That you never know what life's going to bring you. Take every moment of every opportunity to make sure that things go special. I'm sorry that, uh, Sorry we got a little bit too deep here tonight, but man, like there are, it. this is important for everybody here. Biggest win of your life? Absolutely. It just, yeah, it, it's everything that matters to you guys. Like, I don't, I don't get into myself personally, but I've had four different doctors tell me that I'd be dead already. And every time they say something, it's just like, nope, that ain't happening. I was supposed to be blind already. Like, hell, when when I was born, I had uh, 14 hours of surgery right out of the womb. I don't usually get into this story online that much, but... Uh, ah, what the hell, why not? I was born with a second asshole. Straight up. I'm twice the asshole you ever were. <laughs> People didn't expect to come out. And you know what? You just have to... It's one of the reasons why I'm as big as I am because it's the scarring has never really healed. I still have a scar there from the surgery I had at birth. So... You can be as healthy as you want, but sometimes some things you can't help. But it's all about taking advantage of the day. And that's something that's, yeah, surgery is so tough as a kid. I'm glad things are a lot better. And like, like I said, with the Briscoes here, it is great to see that that's happened here. So, yeah, so just always value life everywhere you can. Phew. 
Sorry, just reading the uh, Sean Ross Sap going off about this right now and just how great that this is now that something positive comes out of something negative. That's always the way you got to do it. Try and make as many positives as you can, right? Speaking of positives, what do we got next on the card here? Oh. <laughs> The mustachio porn stars. I thought they got dumped from EVPs. Okay. So he, the, these guys are playing up the noblest cause right now. So are we actually... Oh, okay. Sorry about the dead spot here, but... This promo actually feels like it's going to be very important going forward here. Oh, God. They're trying everything they can to mention CM Punk, but they don't want to. They, they're not allowed. Uh-huh. Renee is so physically uncomfortable right now. So they're going the anti WWE gang here. <sighs> Matthew and Nicholas. It, it, so for people that are asking and I know that uh, people are like why the hell would it be the Bucks against Sting and Darby to finish it oh here we go six man tag time but uh, it is reported that Sting got to uh, Sting got to choose his final opponent and Sting gets to choose how it finishes so 
if it's going to be the Bucks, it's going to be because Sting wants it to be the Bucks. And I could see why. It's like the Bucks are ultimately the guys that brought in uh, the Bucks ultimately brought in Sting, right? Because, you know, it's got to go through the Bucks. It's got to go through Tony Khan. They're they're in charge. Got to go through Omega. And the ultimate thank you would be to use them to get things out, right? Just got off work. Hey, you know what? That's a, that's a bonus. Let's see, which one do I want to use here? There we go. Oh, quiet, Siri. Ugh. I'm a little upset tonight. I'm a little upset right now. I I know these guys are going to be able to bring the crowd back up again, by the way, but because Brian Cage is working in his trio tonight, he can't wear his Streets of Cage gear. If you haven't seen it, go look it up. He's got complete Streets of Rage colored gear with the blue and the right lettering and everything all right this has always annoyed me put two titles in one hand and one in the other you hold that other title between your hands and over your head so it forms sort of a, a let's see here there we go sort of like that that that's the that's the cool way of doing it Work late today? Ugh. Yeah, I know. That was me yesterday. Like, we had uh, one of our car washes. Uh, the furnace died on it. So, literally everything was plastic and, plastic and frozen ice. So, we got the furnace fixed. But once all the water melted, uh, well, let's just say freezing and contracting can ruin some plastic. So... Basically, yesterday I was in there just trying to get everything fixed up on every all the bays, right? Got off work. First thing you did was make a strong Caesar. Hey, shout out to you. Good job, sir. Caesars are the ultimate choice, especially for Canadians. I find it weird. I, I haven't even really thought about it, but I haven't been... Uh, I haven't had a drink since uh, All In. Or sorry, All Out. In October. Because the only place I've drank is usually at Beercade when we're out on our our nights out there, right? In a couple weeks, I'll be doing a sales conference meeting with publishers presentation. Hey, there you go. Can't smoke weed anymore? Ah. Uh. Well, with the specialists I've been going to, I've been I found out that, you know, any kind of pollen and stuff like that I, I'm allergic to. So I've always been allergic to tobacco as part of that. And any kind of cannabis that I deal with, I usually do with, uh, well, it's not, it's CBD, sorry, that I deal with. The only THC I have is a cream for my legs, right? So. Well, that's the one thing that's been helping my knees right now after all this headache. Jesus, look. Sorry, I just threw it together here. I love Brian Cage's face paint here. Ooh. Cannabinoid hypermesis syndrome. So much that my body started rejecting and poisoning your stomach. Ah. Maybe that's why you're sick so much. That makes sense. Ow. One thing I love about, sorry, just throwing it back and forth all over the place here. Well, Zodiac, he didn't lose his, uh, 
he didn't lose his uh, Streets of Rage theming. It's just for tonight. Just because uh, he is in the trios tonight. Shout! Gosh dang it, I just saw that comment there. Holy crap, good to see you. Yes, sir. Crowder, good to see you here as well. Things are going great tonight. It's, uh, Dynamite's been okay. It's, it's a interesting show. Had a few things set up already. We got, uh, Roderick Strong and Orange Cassie set up for the pay-per-view. Everybody's got to have vices here, sir. Mine is playing video games and hanging out with you guys, so... I, I call that an excellent win. <laughs> no, um, yeah, everybody's piling in tonight. It's great to see. It's great to see everybody here tonight. Wednesday nights are always so much fun here. Yeah, and just a reminder, if you, uh, if you are around on Twitch tonight at uh, 11 Eastern, 9 Mountain, uh, Jupiter's going to be streaming once again. First time in a very long time, so. <laughs> yeah, it makes you leave Judas Icarus versus Monero. Oh, that, the match out in Vancouver. Dang. No, it, it, it's great to see everybody out here tonight. It is, like I was saying, Wednesday nights are always my most fun night of the week because everybody just sits here and we just chat about whatever, like, We've been talking about some crazy stuff all night, but sometimes we miss out the matches a little bit, but. When is Crowder going to stream more PJ Mass? I have been tempted to get him to buy that. Uh, I will say on our gaming channel now, every Monday, uh, part two's already up. Part one uh, went up last week. Uh, Transformers... Uh, Transformers Cybertron Expedition. One of the new ones. The new Transformers game that came out. It's just like, eh. Uh, on a, honestly, I've put in some clips up of uh, how rough that game is. And the fact that I got soft blocked at the end of it. When the new child's in daycare, I might go back to streaming. But I'm so bad, I might just try to click and some video. You know what? Whatever you like. And once again, i just like to mention that we do have spots open here at Backbreaker for anybody that wants to be a part of a group here where basically we have a collective list of channels together and just everything goes on a United YouTube page and we try to support each other. Oh, God. Colton just had to hate that. Dang. No way. <laughs> I think Colton didn't jump high enough. That's cool. YouTube's so freaking hard. Our hours of work for like 50 views. Yeah, it, it it's funny. Our wrestling simulcast channel get gets a little bit more than our uh, than our gaming channel, but it's slowly coming. Like, I I will say the one thing I'm most proud of for the gaming channel is now we're around 14 months straight of a, one video a day. I will admit, starting in uh, February, that streak is going to end sometime. I don't have an official date of that yet, but unfortunately, when you run out of content, you run out of content. No way. Oh, I thought he was going to go for the Blade Runner right now. 
No, it's all about the grind. It's all about finding your niche, right? Like, who would have thought that our most popular YouTube video would have been PJ Masks of all things? Love that, you're an Aggie. Oh, God. All right, here we go, everybody. TSN actually got the uh, got the mute on the uh, suck it there. Okay. Oh. Nada! Oh, I want him to win just because that's what that's how Jinder almost won on mon on Monday. Oh yes, uh, Mr. Crowder is a uh, new papa. Really, Bowens? Oh God. All right, there it is. Called it. We were talking about this on the pre-show. Now you're going to have both six-man tag team champions going after... Going after the Undisputed Kingdom here. Yeah, absolutely. Congratulations, Crowder. He... Yeah, it was what? Within a week, both you and Parrish both had kids? Cause yeah, I think it was literally within a week of each other. Still have your chest set from Jules' bachelor party on my dresser. Nice. Congrats to Kyra's partner, just like in wrestling, his partner did 90% of the work. <laughs> First time. There we go. He, he does speak. <laughs> Jesus. We're, well, I'll tell you one thing. That, that promo was uh, recorded last week. Ugh. But yeah, it looks like we're we're reuniting chessboards. I still have to pick up uh, Checkmate Showdown, though. I know that uh, Jupe, you and I were talking about that before, before it got released here. I heard it's not bad. And now that I have a new uh, new PC here, I should be able to play it a little bit easier. It's one thing I want to try to do a little bit more this year, and that's a little bit of PC gaming here too. So not a lot, you know, don't need to go too crazy here, but I, I got a lot of big plans and I don't want to overshoot too much here, so. But yeah, uh, it's been a crazy few months here, Jupe, for you, if you, you when you're catching up. It's going to be fun on your stream tonight, just uh, catching up with everybody that's been around and whatnot. It's, it, it's going to be a fun time, just like it's a hell of a fun time here tonight. We're having a blast. I, I don't know about you guys, but I'm having an absolute blast here about what's going on. Uh, Jupiter's stream tonight is 11 o'clock Eastern, 9 o'clock Mountain. So... Please feel free to uh, stop in there, say hi. One hour, 45 minutes away. Give or take a minute or two. 
I'll probably be hanging out, uh, probably lurking as I'm trying to get the video up on the YouTube channel from tonight's stream. So, was so busy trying to uh, get the new intro done today. So, try to be there too. It's pretty late for me since kiddo gets on the bus and said, oh yeah. Um, my next stream for you guys that are just popping in here might be a little bit late tomorrow. I want to check out the Xbox uh, Developer Direct. I don't know if you guys want a, uh, want me to stream that and comment as we go or just throw it in later. So, um, Depending if nothing, if nothing comes down on the Direct at all that... Uh, if they don't do another Hi-Fi Rush, let me just put it that way. If they pull another Hi-Fi Rush, we might just have to uh, download that and stream it right away. But if not, I'm looking probably towards uh, some feedback given from you guys uh, last week here. We're possibly doing a little road to the show with MLB the, sh the MLB the Show 23. Basically, the be a player mode for those that aren't familiar with it. Tony Storm, seriously. The one person I think more than anyone here who has made such a renowning effect on her character since moving over here to AEW. Like, the clearest example of being able to express yourself so easily. And I, I'll, I'll say this right now for, for Deanna. And I know, I know I'm still trying to get over the fact I'm not supposed to say those words all the time. If I'm going to say it, I'm going to say it, right? But Deanna was getting a lot of fluff uh, online. I, I still can't believe it's 2024 and we're still body shaming people. But of course it's Exitter or Critter or whatever you want, Crap it or but she was doing a, I, I'm just glad that everybody else was just piling back on it and just tell, basically telling them to shut up. Mr. Vic! How the hell you doing here? HPC bad guys, how you doing? Exeter. It is great to have everybody here tonight once again. And uh, just, I'm just glad that, you know, we're getting to the point now where I honestly feel that a lot of these trolls that are coming up, it's actually going down a bit. Because a lot of these trolls are just plain old giving up. Unless your name's JD from New York, and then that's just a whole different story amongst itself. That story there is just one dog crap pile after another but anyway <laughs> let, let's not focus on the negative here now it, it's nice to see anna jay getting this second shot here how you like the grown bucks um i didn't mind it uh it's very they're they're showing that they're showing a different side of what the elite is, and they're they're using elite in a whole different form, which I actually don't mind. Dang. But uh, when it when it comes to the bucks, they're just. Sting wants it. We're going to get it to work. And I hope they produce something out of it. That's all the biggest thing about it. But like I was saying, uh, Anna J, just after she gets that win last week, 
in that eight man uh, Brody Lee tribute match. Or eight woman, sorry. Uh, it's good to see that she's getting the opportunity to work here, but like we were we were talking about this during the pre-show a little bit here that uh, Anna J seems to be the X-Pac of uh, AEW lately when it comes to the women, which if you think about it, it's extremely impressive that somebody so new to the business can be that first opponent for everybody to make sure they know how to work AEW. But yeah, I'm, I'm I'm glad as well. Sorry, Vic. I I thought you were in a commercial break. To be perfectly honest, I see that an ad was up, and I didn't want to, I didn't want to change. Uh, I I didn't want to give an answer while you're in the middle of a commercial, right? So, uh, when it comes to when it comes to the box, I like the fact they're changing it up. I love that they're being essentially the WWE hunters. So. That's where Renee based... If you guys didn't notice, there's one subtle thing that I noticed during that interview. As soon as he used, they used the word superstars, Renee pretty much checked out of the interview. Just for the fact that, you know, John was a part of that, right? So eventually the Bucks are going to be going after John and probably Brian Danielson. I don't know how much you're going to do with Claudio on that, but th that's a whole different story for later. But uh, I, I like where this is going for the Bucks. I hope that um, this is a way to get that heel authority figure without having a heel authority figure. I hope they don't play it as cheesy as they do in WWE with the authorita authoritarian figures. Sorry, quick note coming over the phone. So, uh, if you if I had to book it personally, I would have Sting lose his last match. I would have uh, like Sting going out on his back. That just seems to be that seems to be the way Sting would do it, and instantly that's going to be one legend that the Bucks have killed off. And then they're going to be able to go after another one. And then another one. The next one they could go after is maybe Dustin. Eventually they can get run into the BCC. Adam Cole even. And hell, even Samoa Joe fits under that category. So for, for me, this could line up. This lines up actually pretty perfectly for me that the fact that uh, they could end up going... This is where they get back to that FTR match. Because if you want to talk about WWE stars that moved over, FTR in the tag division is the ultimate team. Oh, God. Cope and Christian eventually saying the differences aside battling the Bucks would be nuts. absolutely. freaking lootly It it would be it would be great to see. It would be like I honestly thought we were gonna get uh, Sting and Darby versus uh, Christian and uh, or sorry Sting and Darby versus Christian and Cope for the tag titles in a TLC match. I I, I think originally I said it was the Hardys that was gonna get in there, but. I, I think, honestly, Tony Khan has no faith in uh, Jeff Hardy anymore, and I don't blame him. Because, yeah, I'm sorry. You, you screw up after you've been hired. Is Tony Khan going to have any faith in putting a title on you or get put you in any prominent spot where, well, let's face it, he can't go to all in. It's like dealing with Jey Uso when he comes to Canada. Like, you got to get special permission. And 
apparently he was only allowed to go to Calgary because there wasn't anywhere that he could hide. Jesus. That double arm bar is just nasty. <laughs> Tony Storm petting with a body. Anna J still playing the face, so. Oh, Renee's popping out there. Mr. Ed, how are you doing tonight? We're just wrapping up the Deanna Perrazzo match here with Anna J. It was a great match. They got, well, 10 minutes. That sounds about normal for the women's match. In between that, oh, that's right. You guys are doing the Echo on Friday, right? Marvel Talk on Friday there? Tomorrow night, okay, yeah, tomorrow night. <laughs> Uh-oh. The hell is that just looked bad for a moment there? Suck you right in the punch. <laughs> oh, my. Even Renee's cutting a laugh right now. Oh, Deanna. Deanna got hit with the shoe. There's a receipt. Oh, and there's the other shoe. <laughs> We're getting the Battle of Sandals here. Watch for the shoe, darlings. Watch for the shoe. Oh, this is amazing here. Top flight and private party. So we're getting that match, and then we'll get the uh, Hook Samoa Joe main event here. So overall, been a hell of a night tonight. And yeah, this, this night has been absolutely jam-packed with all you guys. I'm really thankful to have all you here. Uh, they went to commercial a little bit late there. I thought I didn't hear what Deanna said, but probably something about wanting the title and wanting to fix Tony Storm's wagon or whatever. No, it's great to have you back, Jupe. It's always a pleasure. Hookers Unite. Hey, Shell, I, I got a question for you. We had an entire Rio rivalry in the time that you've been gone here. I hope you got a chance to see it. Like, we got Rio in a title match on a pay-per-view? Just hanging out. I can't even watch AW. Hey, you know what? Sometimes I I've had a lot of people actually do that. I, I will say this. I don't mention the wins that often, or I try to be very general in the finishes because I am typically about a minute ahead of people that are watching with me here because... Apparently, TSN gets their feed five seconds faster than the States. I heard it had something to do with the... Uh, in Canada, there's less of a forced delay for swears than there is in the States. 
In other words, we could just hit the button a lot quicker to silence people. I think it's like a three second delay versus a 10 second delay or something to that effect. Either way. But yeah, like tonight, tonight we're having a bunch of fun here. And I, I will say that no matter what happens, uh, I think the highlight of the night tonight is going to be uh, Mark Briscoe and that announcement tonight. It it has to be. I don't care what what happens. There could even be a title change, and that might even push it. But having somebody turn around and be told they're, they're not going to be able to walk, and then they just come out walking a year later. Like, that promo hit everybody in the crowd. And shout out to the tag team after, or the trios after that, the Bullet Club and the Gates of Agony and Brian Cage, who were actually able to bring the crowd back into it after such an emotional moment. Because a lot of people forget about stuff like that. Like, I know we even had a little bit here where I had to, uh, had to cool things down a bit before we got back on here. But if you didn't hear, like, yeah, it was, uh, it was uh, Jay Briscoe's daughter that was told she was never going to walk again. And within a year, they got her uh, back up here. And then we got to hear stories in our channel about it and all that, too. It just, yeah. A very touching moment, to say the least. So what do you guys think about Private Party coming back as a team now? I believe the term, it's about damn time. Like, it's better for them to work. To Private party was awesome. Hope they stay healthy. Yeah, that's the key thing. Like, both these teams here, the biggest thing we're going to have as an issue with them going forward is health. Because da Dante and Darius have both had major surgeries here in the last couple of years. And then, yeah, Mark Quinn's been out for a long time here. And this is a match we should have had a long time ago. Yeah, this is gonna this is gonna be a gold match. Like You know what do you guys think about that uh basketball jersey for top flight there? I'm just looking at it and I'm popping it and like that is some real indie merch. That's not like the logo fits in way too well. Don't get me wrong, if somebody buys me one, I'm definitely wearing it, but as long as they have size tent. <laughs> Sorry, I had to throw that there. But I expect this match to be high flying and uh a little bit of everywhere here, because it's probably only gonna get about ten minutes. I don't think camo with top flight yeah, like that's the other thing I was thinking of. Oh, the Tony Storm segment you're talking about. Tony pretty much can't do anything wrong right now. And the fact that she gets to work with Deanna. Eh, my sort of prediction here about what's going to be happening in the future. I, I know we've been talking about this forever and I keep saying it's going to happen and going to happen and going to happen. Once, uh, once Deanna and Tony finish their feud, I think that's when you pop in Mercedes. Because if you want to talk about somebody who's all about glitz and glam and all that, let's get Mercedes in there if they're not going to finish the Mariah May story. Or what you could do, Deanna's the one that dethrones Tony Storm Possibly due to some help from Mar Mariah May. Some unintentional, intentional help. And uh, that sets that feud on the way like it should be going here sooner than later. And then you have Deanna versus uh, Mercedes. I'd pay a few dollar bills for that match. 
Oh, a little stare down here. Like, there's a million different ways we could skin a cat here. Make it rain, absolutely. Like, well, hell, like. Here's the other thing that I'm really appreciating here about AEW right now, especially on the on the Dynamite show, and we've talked about this in previous weeks. The majority of the matches here on the uh, the Dynamite brand have been AEW originals. They haven't been uh, the signees from WWE, right? Look at this card, and I think what? I'm just trying to run through. We got... Deanna Perrazzo. I don't even know if she counts as a, a WWE just because she was at NXT for a bit. They got... Literally, I don't think they had anybody here. They're going to get... Rod, sorry, Roderick Strong and the king, the kingdom here. The Undisputed Kingdom is probably going to be it. Yeah, they got to they gotta maintain that. Exactly. Oh, yeah, Cage and Dutton. You idiot. My bad. My bad. But here's the thing about that, too. Christian typically works Saturdays. Uh, Copeland, you're seeing the open challenge every Saturday. This past Wednesday was special because it they were doing the Brody Lee tribute and uh, Copeland wanted to be a part of it. He was wearing his Maple Leafs gear and everything last week and part of that eight-man tag. But for the most part, they are using homegrown talent on their main show on Wednesday. And it's getting the largest ratings. Don't get me wrong. The ratings are going to be all over the place, especially in the next couple weeks. This week's going to suck because NFL football. Next week's going to suck on collision because of uh, the Royal Rumble at the same time. Then after that, they should be okay. Like the numbers should go back up a little bit. I don't know how much what numbers they're going to get on a Saturday night. Like, I I still feel that they should push the show up two hours. My belief has always been, you have that show in the afternoon, late afternoon, six oh five. That's where the old uh, TBS had Saturday night wrestling. It wasn't like they're starting at eight o'clock on the East Coast. People are going out to the bar by then. By 8 o'clock, they're getting their pre-drink on. You do it in the afternoon so you have the kids able to watch in the afternoon before they go out for any kind of night activity. Same thing with the, the money makers there. The college kids, the millennials, they'll, they'll watch. If it's on on a late Saturday afternoon, they will watch. But Saturday night? How fast can you get to the bar? How fast can you get to your friends? How fast can you do anything else? The only reason I don't watch Collision is the fact that I'd have to pay an extra $8 a month to watch it. Between that and Rampage, it's tempting now, the way the product's getting better, but at the same time, there's so many other things to do. And plus, I usually stream Saturday night, so you know where to, you know where to stop by. But hell, I'd even change it up and I I might even do a watch along for that if if it started being a little more prevalent, a little more useful. So And shout, we were talking about that, the whole concept of the five channels. A lot of people don't realize that in Canada for those that are in the States here, forgive me, I have to go into Canadian politics here for a Canadian TV politics here for a few seconds. TSN, which is our, is the Canadian equivalent to ESPN, has five channels. They they openly advertise five channels. What a lot of people don't realize is essentially they have two channels, but four of the, they have two broadcast channels. Four of them are different time zones. Like one's for Toronto, one's for Ottawa, one's for Montreal, and the other one's for Winnipeg, I do believe. In terms of uh, ESPN, the Ocho. 
I would definitely. So because they're all four of the five channels are all regional based, they really can't pick a channel to put any of this extra wrestling on. Like where we get this is TSN two, which is basically ESPN two for lack of a better, for the best comparison. So we still have the ability, like it's on one of the two main channels. So the only way they can get it to us is put it on their subscription service, which they don't include with their cable package. So you have to pay an extra eight bucks a month to watch it. And, and don't get me wrong. I'm tempted based on some of the stuff that's coming up. Would you guys be interested in a collision watch along? Cause I wouldn't mind doing it. It's just, I'll tell you this right now. I wouldn't be doing it on nights where there's WWE pay-per-views on. Depending where they are, of course. Rather have a TNA watch along. Yeah, that those Thursday night shows are a lot of fun. And just a reminder, if you are, uh, if you are watching TNA impact on a regular basis and you want to talk about it on a camera, um, uh, backbreaker video cohort, uh, Astro Pizarro is actually looking for a second to chat about wrestling, about TNA wrestling specifically. So we used to have making an impact, uh, on the channel. Unfortunately, we had to, uh, postpone it, take it off for a while. So now we're uh, possibly looking at bringing it back in a way, so. I would love to do it. I just, I, I don't have any further time right now. I, I can't make the full-time commitment to be a part of it. So that's why I won't. Like I said, this year, my main goal is to focus on myself here and, you know, grow the things that are important to me, just like being here tonight. And you guys are starting to see some of the changes that are coming up here, so. But yeah, if you guys are interested and you want to hang out with Astrid and talk Impact Re or TNA Wrestling, if you, don't know, if you don't know our contacts, throw me a line and I'll send you that way, so. Yeah, this is where they kept it up. That this, this is our tag team division of the future here. If these guys cannot end up in the hospital every every six months, we are going to get two fantastic two fantastic teams here fighting for titles for a while. Uh oh, Jesus! Gin and juice out of nowhere. Ah, private party using the ropes. Character development. Character development. <laughs> they learned from Matt Hardy. Uh-oh. Do they have a third? I know that Action and Dreddy's come out. I, I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about Private Party. Oh, there goes Mark Quinn. Yeah, we're definitely going to get a rematch. Or... Here's the thing. When you get... Three-man teams, you can alternate those all the way around. This was the main matchup. Oh, 
Oh, great. So now we're getting Sting to respond already? Oh, hello. Oh, do you guys remember that that uh, cinematic match? That was actually pretty cool when they had that. So is this how they're going to transition... So are they going to transition the titles over to Sting and Darby and then over to the box? That actually make a lot of sense. That way you can get that rematch between the Bucks and FT. Ultimate Endgame here is going to be Bucks versus FTR. I can almost guarantee that. So what do you guys think about this uh, hook... Uh, Hook spotlight like he's Batman from Gotham. Well, he is from Gotham, but that's beside the point. The other thing I enjoy about Hook here more than anything, it's more it's more with Taz that I enjoy it. The fact that he, we all know about it. We all know about the relationship, but at the same time, Taz doesn't go out of his way to make it feel like we know that, or we have to know that he's his son. Commercial free for the end of it. I do apologize that, you know, we do have an ad coming up here. So if you're not subscribed or you don't have Twitch Turbo, for, um, may I recommend getting it? Oh, and if you guys haven't heard of Twitch Turbo, it's basically 14 bucks a month here in Canada. Price varies by country. Gets rid of all the ads. All the ad revenue that would have went to the streamer still goes there, but you don't have to worry about paying for subscriptions to every single channel. I just find it such a godsend. Who the fuck is that guy? Uh, I I love how that got over, Vic. We were talking about this during the pre-show that uh, Tony Khan's not a stupid man. The fact that the USA Network was talking about Tony Khan when you're when he's the number two, and number one's talking about number two and half the roster on WWE was talking about number two, you know that that's getting you a little extra buzz. And and to me, I, I think it was a win. I know a lot of people were upset about it, but it was a means to an end, or an end to a means, whatever way you want to call it. I think you get some more eyes, and that's, you know, I uh, gotta love it when a video game sponsors getting rid of commercials. That is a sharp blue suit there. Tony usually goes off the deep end when he's got something significant coming up. Exactly, shout. You you got to bang on there. That uh, when he's go, he, he Tony Khan's not a dumb man. Like, like tonight, one guy was, uh, um, Tony Khan put out a tweet about Shivani not being available. Tony Khan, or the, the guy fired back with a no one cares meme. And Tony basically turned around and said, no, a lot of people care. And now all of a sudden, everybody's dogpiling on this conversation online. 
And even then, it just reminds everybody that, yeah, they got a show tonight. Oh, yeah. All you have to do is read the thread and you know that there's a show going on tonight. And that means, uh, yeah, a lot more people are tuning in. It's going to be interesting to see what kind of numbers they do tonight. I'm not a big numbers guy. I don't go out of my way to find them, but it seems they show up rather easily, though. What do you guys think about the custom side plates they finally got on these? I, I think Joe is going to make Hook look like a superstar tonight. I think I think Hook's going to get worked, but he's still going to look like an absolute menace there. He's going to put Joe through a challenge. Oh, no, they got an overrun. Don't worry about it. For the last four weeks, they've been doing overruns, so... I could see them doing another overrun tonight, too. Oh, God. Joe checking the knuckles, see what they could do here. Hook selling a little bit too much, and Joe picks him up. I think Joe realizes that the whole he got nine minutes thing. It's those finer points that uh, Hook is not going to uh, know about, and it's like this timing-wise, right? And how long you really should be selling right now. This reminds me a lot of Samoa Joe's last independent match in Can uh, right before he signed with NXT. I got the privilege to be in the front row for it as uh, he was taking on Michael Richard Blaze here in Edmonton. Joe had to win no matter what. I think Michael got one shot in the whole match. So Hook got at least a couple more than that. Didn't go for the senton, went for the elbow instead. Usually from that setup, he usually goes into his senton. Cross, senton crossface, uh, Boston Crab transition all the way. He knows every move in the book kind of deal. Hook's got the technique, but can he get him up? That's the problem. Nice move. This is a real nice dichotomy here. Like, Hook's showing exactly what you should be doing as a little man trying to take out a big man. I'll have to say this. I'm seeing a lot more from Hook than I thought I would. He's still trying to get that suplex. In. Oh, ow. 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 I love how Joe just marches away. Just because he knows what he did. He knows that the kid needs a second to breathe after that. Jesus. Because that table did not collapse the way it's supposed to.
Ha! Wow! Looks got some guts! Oh, there goes the spine. Just got to the owl part, yeah. Well, there's a double owl coming up. I can't wait till we get the chance to call that the steam bomb. Might be a few years for that, but it'll come. The other reason why you do a spot like this right now and just forgive me from a production side of it. You put somebody on the outside lying like that for an extra bit of time because you got the ring skirts with the advertising it's very smart yo joe killed yeah like seriously joe is murdering him hook ain't giving up there's that snap slam i love that see this is like i said this is how you make hook look like an absolute star I came I scissored I came again Ugh. please make it relevant to the match burning hammer He's gotten a bit of offense and he's shown his toughness. So this is going to uh, put some, put a lot more stock into hook. All right, here we go. Does he hit the muscle buster? If he does, it's over. Yep. There we go. No, they're going to make him... Ch He's going to get choked out. One. 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 I love Rubicon here. He's like, you got to make a play now. Let's go. Hot diggity dang. And he hits the T-bone now. This is storytelling at its finest here. You know, win, lose, or draw. This is this match is gonna put Hook in up in another atmosphere here. No, can't get it in. His arms. Are, Joe's neck's too big for him. All right, here it is. He made a mistake. No, he's out. He's out. It's Hooks Jeff Hardy versus Led to take her ladder match. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, you said they had nine minutes. They used eight. Makes you wonder if he's going to give him the, uh, the appreciation spot here. The respect spot. Hook's getting up. Ha! 
He just said that's is that all you got? Come on, Taz. Come on, Taz. That was a match. That was a hell of a match. Look at Hook. So Joe is going to make so many wrestlers and he's just going to. Oh, and here comes Hangman to break this up. And Hook's going to be pissed because he wanted more. Look at Joe's face, though. It's one thing I like about this. Joe's got that concerned look on his face. Weird seeing Hook take so much damage while... Oh, God. Okay. Joe's got that look of... Oh. This might be a little bit more serious than I thought. Hook shoving off page. And now Hook's pissed because he doesn't get to finish off with his moment. And we're going to go to fade the black off. The I don't know if we need Swerve out there, to be honest, to finish this off. You could have just ended it on Paige coming out. Because that's probably where we're going to end up here. Because I would think it's going to be Paige versus Joe first. Hook left, and then they tell him, no, go back in. Swerve out there kind of ruins the hangman angle, yeah. So you're doing it again? The hell is this? <sighs> Little convoluted finish there. I think Hook made the mistake of leaving the ring early. He was supposed to sell a little bit more in this final bit here was supposed to be how they close out the show. It, it would have made a little bit more sense that way. I, th I think Hook was just, he saw the moment disappear when they started chanting for Swerve and he just pieced it. But I feel that... Uh, and then, I, like I said, I think they just brought everybody back. They brought them back in after just to try and finish it the way they're supposed to. Like Tony buzzed somebody to get them back in there. So all in all tonight, decent dynamite. You know, new uh, six-man tag champs for ROH, which is now setting up the dual, six, the dual trios champions storyline. We had uh, Christian Cage and uh, Dustin serviceable match it finished the way we expected had a tag match where we set up uh hook did the right thing reacted to the swerve's chance you were right swerve did not need to be out there yeah like when you have somebody in the crowd that's as nuclear as swerve is right now like we were talking about it before the show 
sw or during the show. Swerve, it's damn shame that he doesn't have a title yet. But he's got that effect like he has a title. Like he is the one of the top guys. And it just, it, it doesn't work. It, it doesn't work bringing him out there because he's going to hijack a segment worse than an NDA agreement. There we go. Uh, but yeah, like, I, I, if we could have cut off those la that last minute and a half and just leave it, even if you want to have Swerve out there and just finish with the stare down into the crowd and just cut it right there. Have Hook come back and do his whole thing off the air when he comes back in the ring and tries to get his kudos and he doesn't get it. That's fine, but cut it off when you have the stare down between the two. Uh, once again, just subtle production things, and that's nothing new for AEW. Women's segment was great there with uh, Anna J, Deanna Parasso having a great match. Anna J is really turning into the X Pac of. Uh, AEW for the women's division and doing a fantastic job of it. Uh, Tony Storm, Deanna Parasso, that's going to be that's going to be a fun match when we get to it. And then yeah, we got uh, Roderick Strong setting up against Orange Cassie. That's our I think that's actually our first official match that we've had declared for Revolution. Which I'm really surprised that they're booking that match a month and a half ahead. Like, March 3rd is a long way away. So, I don't know what to say at that point there. Like, why why, why book it this early? You got, like, six weeks to develop this here? I assume Orange is going to defend the title at least four times between now and then. So, it almost makes all those cha those championship matches pointless. But, well, once again, we'll just see what happens. And then top flight, private party, a glimpse into the future. We're starting to see the private parties going back to their heelish ways. It's great to see. And overall, I have to say this definitely was worthwhile. And the most, the biggest thing about it being worthwhile was hanging out with all of you tonight. So.